Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the Tactical Trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Thursday night, the 1st of December, December 1st, 2016. These are the charts of the day. Well, it wasn't a pretty day on Wall Street. Let's take a look at the charts first on the indices. And you can see we've been coming down hard on the NDX. The S&P hasn't been much better, a little bit more, um, you know, orderly in terms of stair-stepping. I think the most important thing to watch right now is this. The NASDAQ 100 hourly chart. Look how extreme this has been. Shall be down, shall be up, shall be down, shall be up, and back, shall be down. We're all over the place. Is this indicative of topping action long term? Uh, I'm not quite sure. But I can tell you this multiple times, 4,900, it barely got above it a couple times here. But on four or five attempts, the market has stalled between 4,890 and 4,910, thereabout, in that 20 point zone. And then the sharp sell off. This, this has taken us from 40, um, eight, 88, 89, this time, to 47.21. It's a big, sharp drop. And I do expect a retest, um, but I'm concerned, of course, that the market closed below this line here. And that doesn't mean necessarily that much, but I will say this. Looking back, if you can take a look at this, you'll see that there is another bottom in this zone down here. Let's pull this line down here and I'll show it to you. And if we draw that line back again, <clears throat> you'll see that this below back there and this low in here, it could be where we need to retest the test unless this market wants to bounce in the zone. The McClellan oscillator closed at plus two today. It is nowhere near oversold. And that's because that is based on New York Stock Exchange advanced declines and up down volume, not NASDAQ. NASDAQ oscillator has to be more oversold. Look at the drop in here. But it's disconcerting a little bit. Uh, we may very well get a move down in that zone before we get a big bounce, or we can bounce right here and test resistance, which right now is at 47.80. On the S&P, a little bit of a different picture. We've had that huge run up off the low from the F post election. It took it from 20.83 or so all the way up to 22.14. A very big move. Um, and you can see that the pullback after one, two, three, four is probably taken up. I'm going to redraw these lines because it looks, it looks to me like if you draw them off the spike high, right there, and then pull this down a little bit and give you a parallel line, right there, that this could be an entry point for a bounce should it um, be wave one, two, three, and four, and wave five is still to be, to be had. It's a tricky, tricky, tricky market right now. And you can see how bad the leadership is from NASDAQ 100. Um, <clears throat> I'll spend a lot more time going over that this weekend, but for now, let's take a look at some stocks long and short. I'm gonna show you some of the infrastructure, infrastructure plays and swing trades that we've had. Remarkably, a lot of them are up today. I wanna to show you this. AGX jumped to $1.65 and bounced off support. Um, if you scroll in on it, <clears throat> I'd like to see this level right about there, 57 and a half, eight hold. That would be a stopping point potentially, and for sure under 54, you were out. But if this holds true to this channel, we may very well see this make a run at 71. A new one I spotted today, Atwood Oceanics, has broken through its major declining top sign and through double top with big volume. So and it's oil related, so this may very well extend if the oil stocks do. This could very well see 13 and a half, 14. That's my target going forward. There's 6.6 days to cover something to put on your watch list. Atwood, Oceanics, ATW. How about that blue? It exploded. It got as high as 77 and change, which is right in a resistance zone, right? And filling the gap. So I'm not surprised that it pulled back here. A lot of times when you get news and a biotech stock pops and pulls back, even though it was up 830 or 14%, and it did it on Big one of the biggest volumes I've ever seen in a stock, if not the biggest on an up day ever. Um, coming off resistance, it's normal to retest. So at this point, I'm thinking that maybe uh, we'll have to watch the next day or two to see if this thing does anything better than that. But your support is now 59 and 57. And if we can get it upset, be above 75, 6 range, this could be a $95 stock, depending on whether or not the market in, improves and the biotechs really move here. If they do, I expect blue to be in the forefront, along with Colucid. Today, CLCD, one of our swing trades, is up 85 cents or 2.4%. But on a day like this, I'll take it. You can see that little coil that's forming. We need to get this to pop over the high for the week around 
36.65, and then I'm looking at resistance at 40 and a half three quarters. If we can get through that, we're looking at a $60 stock potentially. Great looking long term chart. Clovis is another one that did well today. It was up $1.29 at three and three quarter percent. Not bad considering the biotechs that weren't that strong. And these stocks, Blue, Colucid, and Clovis, um, I think Clovis and Blue are both involved with CAR, uh, CAR T. Um, so um, that one also forming a nice little coil. And let's watch Clovis because if it gets above 37 and a half, it could start to really fly. And what a day for ERI out of nowhere. Take a look at this. Stock ramped up all day. I didn't see that until late in the session. But what that means is after a strong surge and a falling wedge that held the 50 right about there, this has exploded right back to test the highs. And within the long-term rising channel, I'm now looking at a $20 stock potentially. 13.26 days to cover. We could see some squeeze, and that may be what went on today. Now, Swing Trade Geo also had a good day, but it did back off. It popped to 34.84, and that's the range of resistance up here, 35.05, 35.14, and 35.05. We got up to just underneath that, 34.84. You can see multiple tops in that range. This is resistance. But since the swing trade was put on after it popped and pulled back, it's worked from, its way from 29.30 up to 30, near 35. So not too bad so far. And you can see the volume and technicals look good. Watch this one because through here I'm looking at 38. And then we'll have to reassess. 4.2 days to cover. Transportation stocks did great today. Look at the trend index. I want to point that out to you. In the midst of all this market, that was up 0.62%, or 55 points. And set a new multi-year high, at least the highest level since March of 05, the year 18-month high. So the transportations, the financials, and um, the oils, of course, uh, led the market today for the most part, although the oils did sell off in the afternoon. Right now, um, you can see that resistance on the transportation is up here. But I wanted to point out that one of our swing trades, Swift, made a nominal new high today. Um, well, actually, it wasn't a new high, but it did. It was up on a session, 33 cents. Not bad, but it's still consolidating. You can see that if this is a, an ascending wedge of sorts, and it gets through resistance right there, this thing can start to move. And we may very well see this get into the high 20s. I mean, the high, yeah, near 29 range. Um, nice pattern, nice chart. Eight and a half days to cover. We could get a squeeze and a pop on that one. Sounds like a, talking about pills, uh, pimples there. <laughs> squeeze and a pop. Um, Tilly's, good day for that stock. No question. A really nice blowout earnings report. The stock exploded for 42%. Went up 413. That was a great day trade. Take a look at the pop and wedge here. Most of it, a lot of us got in this range in the $12 range. And the damn thing was up 14. Good day trade. Now, the daily chart shows base breakout, a nice platform over the last couple months. And today's a breakaway gap, a huge volume for the stock. There is a level of resistance around 14.65. That should be tested tomorrow. We'll see if it gets through. If, if it does, 16 and a half or so is your near term target. That looks great. You guys, well, it's been moving steadily for two weeks now. And it's gone from under 20 to over 40, more than doubling in just a couple, three weeks. So it's up against resistance in here and a gap, so you may see some pullback, but momentum is very strong in this one right now. USCR is an um, infrastructure swing play. We got a bit of a pullback this week as it backed off the 62 range. Right now, your key support for me is 55. It got down to 56.50, and bounce today was up a little bit on the day, about 90 cents. Nevertheless, I still like the overall structure. I'm still looking for more upside. I suspect this stock at some point makes a move towards the 67, 69 zone. That's my target for the swing trade. And last is Winnebago, which did bounce back a little bit, 55 cents. Uh, it was a strong group. The actual uh, recreational vehicle stocks like PII also had a good day, popping out of the coil. And I believe Thor was up. Let's see, THOR. Oh, it's THO, sorry. THO popped. And you can see this stock, these three stocks, Thor, Polaris, and Winnebago, all having a good time. They're all recreational vehicles. Uh, I think that Thor and Polaris are more of the um, uh, snowmobile types, uh, and the Winnebago is more obviously mobile home types. But nevertheless, it looks like though that industry is being very well thought of uh, by Wall Street, and so keep an eye on those three in particular. Now, a quick look at the box of shorts. 
a biomed. I told you this last weekend that it, it was in a rising wedge, it could collapse. And right now, the rising wedge, take a look at it. It came down and popped one more time. And today was a negative day for sure. As a volume increased to the downside, the stock dropped 485. At this point, I would say I'm looking for a quick move near the $100 range. This little platform right there might get tested. Call it 101. Beneath that, I'm looking at 93. So this one looks to me like it's setting up for more downside. This is just leg in one and two. Leg three, who knows where that goes. This could be quite short. ATHN, another new low today, nominally at 91.46. So this stock is down um, like 40 points, 42 points from its high in the beginning of October. And the top has been completed. Let's take a look at it again. Here's a weekly. Massive top completed below this low. It looks to me like for sure this is going to test 85.6 range. Right there. Maybe even 84. CMPR Simpress. Well, it broke down in October. It formed a three-wave corrective bear flag or wedge. Today it got hammered for 377. Looks like it's about to fall apart towards 75 very quickly. Cooper also rolled over. Lost $5 at 3% today. May very well see 153 and then 140. Those are my targets. Really ugly looking topping pattern. Huh? Look at these technicals. DXCM. Well, after getting whacked here and, uh, and to support at the bottom of the channel, I said, uh, cover your shorts and look for an opportunity to reshort. Well, it filled the gap. And look at four days in a row, straight down from 74 to 63. And I bet you we're going to see a quick retest of this 59 range. And we may even get it all the way down to low 50s. This looks pretty ugly as well. Look at these technicals. Flowers, FLO, may be ready to implode. One, two, three, four. If it's any similar to that and repeats this, we'll see the stock near 12. Home Builder LGI H. After the channel was broken and the bear flag formed a 1 2 3 wave corrective, let's call it rising wedge. Take a look. Now it looks like it cracked it today. I would look for a retest of 28.5, followed by 25. Lula Lemon <laughs> dropped off of the high today and finished down on the day after being up. It's two days in a row it's done that. Technicals look pretty bad, and if this thing breaks 54, we could see the stock in the mid-40s. Mercado Libre got smacked today for 652 and broke the flag. That may very well um, test and take out resistance uh, support, which is right at on the close today. And if it implodes, we can see this at 127. NTES, NetEase also rolling over here. Bear wedging there, breaking down today. First target, about 200. Second target, about 180. Teleflex, TFX, one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave is underway. This is breaking with big volume for the downside. I'm looking for eventually to get this stock to test 122.25 range. And lastly, is WOOF, VCA, Antec, or WOOF, for, uh, because they own several hundred pet hospitals nationwide? It broke its pet top pattern here, filled the gap, and ran back to the moving average. It's rolling over. This one looks to me like it's headed south, probably into the mid-50s and maybe even 50 per se. That's the look at the long and short of it, and that's the last video for this week, folks, until Saturday. Have a great evening. Let's see if we can make some money tomorrow. Good night, everybody.